Okay, following Jay Silver, no pressure. Um, so I think robots are really cool, but I think rats are even cooler. I mean, robots, I guess, we've got them stumbling around our lab. Um, they need a lot of love from us to keep going most of the time. Rats, on the other hand, completely self-sufficient. They can do amazing things. And one of the real interesting challenges that I have in robotics is just to get a robot to go from A to B. Rats do this so effortlessly and so beautifully. You know, they can navigate across kilometres of terrain going through grass, through sewers. They don't get lost. They know how to get from A to B. I so wish I had a robot that could do that. So I started working with some neuroscientists, people who understand how brains work. And they do some pretty odd things with rats. Um, so the, the rat in the photograph there has some electrodes in its brain, right? And those electrodes are positioned next to a part of the brain that's known to be involved in navigation. Using those electrodes in the brain, the, we're able to see what those cells are doing in relation to navigation. If you look carefully here, you're, you can see that every time the rat's head is pointing to uh, your right, then that's when you hear the sound. And the sound you're hearing is the sound of nerve cells firing. That's nerve cells going off when the head is pointing in a particular direction. So this means that somewhere in that rat brain, there are cells that calibrate head direction. And this is global head direction. No matter where it is in that arena, it'll always go off when the, the cells, when the head's pointing in a particular direction. There's all kinds of cells, right? So uh, the box, uh, in the diagram there shows you the place within an arena. And that kind of radar diagram shows you the direction that the head's facing. So there's one type of cell called a place cell. So the rat moves around, and when it gets to a particular place, bzz, 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 right, that cell fires at that place. There's other kinds of cells called head direction cells. And you can see on the little radar diagram there that it's only when the head, this is the one in the video, faces in a certain direction, bzz, bzz, right, they go off. There's funky ones called grid cells as well, that fire in tessellated patterns and sometimes correlated with head direction as well. The, uh, the interesting thing then is if you study the way that the rats are going and the way these cells are going off, you find that there's really three things you need to take into account. One, these, you, you can tell that rats remember their pose, even if they can't see anything, you know, take away the smells, the sounds and, and, and every, you know, turn all the lights out. They still remember where they are. So they're not relying on what they see to know where they are. What's more, if, they, if you still keep all their, their sensor information switched off, but just let them walk around, they track where they are. I mean, they build up some error, just the same as if you're stumbling off to the loo in the middle of the night and it's dark and you don't quite line up with the door. Yeah, There's always some, there's always some error when you track through the dark. But then once they get some sensory information, when your head bangs into the door frame, right, then you can correct, you know where you are. And it's the same with the rat. We see that in all their cells. Neuroscientists have got some idea, really broad ideas, about how these things are hooked up, right? And give us some idea of a wiring diagram and a little bit of an idea of a wiring diagram between each of the cells. So what I'm going to try and do now is explain how a rat brain works. And the only reason I can do this is because I've built one. So we started out with virtual neurons. Yeah, so this is the, the head direction cells I'm talking about here, arranged around in a circle, right? So let's just say every 30 degrees for starters. I'm going to unwrap those and we can just think about them being in a straight line. And we're going to think about ways that we can wire them up. We know that brains are wired up. They're connected to each other in different ways. So if we connect cells to themselves and to the ones nearby, we're starting to build a memory circuit. If one of these neurons is active, if it's going biz, 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 it'll tend to make itself stay that way. And the other thing it'll do is it'll stop the other cells. It'll inhibit the other cells. So it'll really say, this is it. This is the direction I'm facing, and I'm confident about it. So what you'll see, then, is this same wiring diagram repeated multiple times for each cell. So if you have this blue bar, then, as the sort of level of noise you've got coming out of one of these virtual neurons, this is a situation where perhaps the rat is slightly confused. We know that head direction cells want to converge back onto a single pattern of activity. So this is the remembering thing ticked off. The other thing we know that these cells can do is track head direction. And we can actually pull apart what's going on in these cells and hook up the, the motion cues. So just the way that the, the rat's feet work. If you strap a rat to a skateboard, 
and push it around, it can't track anymore. It relies on actually moving to, want to, to be able to do this tracking function. So if, if you wire up uh, the, the cells in this way, so if you're going in a positive direction, you make the cells with bigger numbers get more active, and the cells with smaller numbers get less active. And what you see then is if you get some kind of motion cue that that activity packet will indicate that the, the head direction is changing. And of course you can do the same for the other direction. All right, so that left, that's two down, okay? We've done remembering, we're tracking. The other one we want to do now is to be able to correct off error. We need this to work in a robot. So we needed a system just to recognize landmarks. And this is really different to anything else that's going on in robotics at the moment. That generally, vision is considered to be a really hard problem. We tried to make it really simple. So we grabbed a, a camera, and cameras take images. And all we really did was start to store away the template images that the camera saw over time. And we associated each uh, image that we saw with a cell. We call it a local view cell. So when the camera sees a new image, it can have a look at the other images and say, is this something I've seen before? And if it is, then it can send a message off to the positioning cells saying, yeah, this, this is a, a scene I've seen before. If it's a new image that it hasn't seen before, then it checks all the others, and if it needs to, it creates a new image. And after a while, it builds up a bit of a memory of things that it sees in its environment. You can connect up all of these landmarks, and, and of course, there are a lot of these landmark scenes, uh, landmark cues you might see over time. But if you see a landmark while you've got activity in a particular direction, you can see how those connections get stronger. It can learn to make stronger connections between that landmark and a particular head direction. So, the rat's been wandering around in the dark, it's got the head direction wrong. We can, with these virtual neurons, then do correction of which way that head's facing. So now we're really coming up with you know, we got a bit of help from the neuroscientists. We're really starting to come up with a complete wiring diagram for maybe this is how a rat brain works. You, I've shown you just head direction. You can do all the same tricks in 2D as well as I showed you in 1D, which means that you can do tracking um, and you can do this correcting of errors and all these other functions as well by extending the 1D idea into 2D. So what can you do with it? This is one of the first experiments that we did. We, um, got, we, we were given a MacBook, um, and we're a PC lab. Um, so we didn't really know what to do with it, so we stuck it on the roof of a car. <laughs> and we went for a drive around um, some of the streets nearby, and we ran the video from the webcam on that, that MacBook um, through our software. So what you see um, up in the... Uh, your top left is the map of the area we drove through, and on the right is the video coming from the webcam. Now, there was no other information here. There was no GPS, there was no connection into the car. It's really just the video from this webcam uh, running through a MacBook. Now, down the bottom is the representation of the place cells of, of the rat brain, and the way that the, the, the place cells remember, track, and correct as they go along. So, the car goes off. Oh, sorry. The car goes off. We drove slower than that. This is speeded up. And it's going right around the outside of that map for starters. And it's tracking along, but it made an error. But the rat brain can correct, right? It's, it's neural, it's plastic. It can correct what it's doing. And in fact, every time it gets back to a place that it knows that it's seen before, the map's able to correct itself. So using nothing other than the appearance of this video going through, there's no laser measurements, there's no GPS, just using the appearance of this video as it comes past. In the same way that you might judge appearance moving through a scene, it's able inside its head to build up a complete layout of, the, uh, of this suburb, of this suburban area that we've been driving through. Okay, I promised you robots. The other study we did then was to say, well, what happens if we put this inside a robot, a robot that's going to do deliveries? It didn't actually deliver anything. It didn't have any arms. It was, it, it's just a little pioneer robot that can drive, drive around. We had this robot um, working for about two weeks. Um, it charged up its own batteries, and, and it got told to, to give deliveries in, in different locations as it went around. So here's the robot waking up off its battery charger. It doesn't assume that its battery charger has been left in the same place. While it's asleep, it, it understands it, it might have gone somewhere else. So the first thing it does, it works out where it, it is. 
then receives a command to go to goal five and off it goes. Again, speed it up. Um, this ran day and night over a two week period. We didn't ever give it, we never gave it a map, right? It worked out its own map. All we had to tell it was where the goals were. When it arrives at its goal location, it registers that it's there. It did this 1,177 times out of 1,178. The case that it didn't make it involved an undergraduate student and his bag. <laughs> Importantly, in this study, one of the things we did, after about a week, we said, well, this is going rather well. Let's try and break it. And we took the robot and took it to the building next door. We didn't tell the robot we'd taken it to the building next door. But when it woke up off its battery charger, it said, oh, this is new and started building a map for that area as well. The, the really cool thing is that it didn't try and connect that map with its original map. It said, this is a different building. I'm going to need some new goals here. We gave it the new goals. It performed deliveries there. When we took it back to the original location, it just resumed normal operation. This is the kind of plasticity, the kind of learning that we can get out of a, a neural uh, simulation of what's going on in a rat brain. OK, so that's, that's nice. But is it really like a rat? Well, the exciting thing is that it is. As we were building our system, there was work going on in a, in a different neuroscience lab, and they, and they were really uncovering a lot about what's going on in these grid cells I told you about. And there was a major publication in Nature while we were running our study showing this tessellated pattern. And if you look at the pattern between the cells, now the, the, the one on your right, that's, they are, that's real recording from rats. And you can see that there's a collection of little equilateral triangles that make up the, the, the place positions where these cells go off. Well, guess what? When we looked inside our virtual, virtual neurons and did recordings in the same place on our virtual neurons, we had the same pattern. We can demonstrate uh, exactly the same kind of pattern coming up. This gives us a lot of confidence that what we're doing, you know, we, we set out to take rats to build better robots, but at the end of the day, the robots we're building help us understand rats. And if we can understand what's going on in a rat brain, maybe we can understand what's going on in a human brain. And this can help us with diseases like Alzheimer, where we, we know that people are losing their ability to navigate um, as they lose these same parts of the brain that we've been studying. Um, I'd like to thank my collaborators on this project, uh, Michael Milford and, and Will Madden. Two takeaway messages. Um, if you understand biological systems, you can do much better engineering. Um, rats to robots is one story, but I think there's a, a lot of connection between what goes on in the natural world to what we can make in a, in a science and engineering world. Secondly, when you build things with science and engineering, if you start out with the biological principle, then you can take that back home again and maybe you can understand biology that little bit better. Thank you very much.